Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a dynamic footstep system so that when you walk on different materials it plays different sound effects. So the examples I'm going to be giving you today are grass, concrete and wood and I'm going to be using some sound effects which I got off freesound.org which I'll link in the description down below. So you can obviously use this with any material you like, any sound effects you like, and you can have as many as you like but these are the examples I'm going to be doing today. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first step you're going to want to take is obviously adding your audio. So I've already imported all of my audios here. Again, you're going to want to make sure that these are a WAV 16-bit file, otherwise they won't import correctly. So I have two concrete, two grass, and two wood. You can have as many as you like, one, two, three, anything like that. For this example I'm doing anyway, so I'll show you what these ones sound like. Now the grass footsteps I've noticed sound a lot like Minecraft, uh, however I'm not sure if they are from Minecraft or if they are genuinely grass footsteps, they just sound extremely similar. But like I say, I've got all of these off of freesound.org. And also while I remember, I do need to credit some of these. So the wood are by Ronald Van Wunderen on freesound, the concrete is by Moving Played on freesound, and the grass is by Snowman on freesound. And the reason I'm saying that is because they have these under the attribution license meaning you have to obviously give them credit when you use these so if you use these sound effects in your game make sure you put their names in the credits and obviously link it back to free sound so like i say these sounds are linked in the description down below so once you've imported your sounds what we're going to do is create a sound cue for each of these so what we're going to do is hit right click go to sounds and then we're going to create a sound cue there this one i'm going to call concrete footstep cue and now you can call this way if you want but this is what i want to do it because that makes the most sense for me. And then we're gonna just duplicate these another two times. So we'll control C, control V. This one I'm gonna change to grass, footstep, Q, and the last one to wood. So as you can see, I'm naming these for the sound effects I have. So get the correct amount of sound cues that you need for you. So I have concrete, grass, and wood. If you have more than that or less than that, get the correct amount. And so what we're gonna do is just open these all up straight away. So select them, hit enter to open them up like that. And we're gonna import our sound effects. So we'll start with wood first, if we just made that a bit smaller like that, select our wood sound effects, just drag and drop them in there. If we maximize this again, you can see we now have these here. So you can select the audio, mess about with these if you want, make the volume louder, quieter, all of this good stuff. What I'm going to do is simply just come out of the output, get a random, put both of those in there, so the random goes into those. The output, I'm going to get a modulator, I'm going to put the output of that into the output of the actual sound cue. And so what this is doing is it means that whenever this sound cue is called, it's going to play a random sound effect. And this is good because then it won't just play the same exact sound effect every time, so it doesn't sound like a looping sound when you're walking on wood or grass or anything. It will sound different and have more texture kind of to it, so it will just sound a lot better. So we can save that, close that one, we'll do the same for grass. So select your grass, put that in there. Actually we could have copy and pasted that. So what we'll do is get a random, put that into the both of those again. Output into a modulator, put that in there. And if you have more than two sound effects for your random, what you can do is just hit the plus input there, or add input, sorry, hit the plus, and then you get another node in which you can add another sound in there. But I'm just gonna right click, delete the inputs, I don't need it. So what I'm gonna do is select the random and the modulator, control C to copy those, we'll save this, we can close it, do it again for the final concrete one, open that up there, put those in, move these down here, control V to paste in the random and the modulator nodes there, and we'll plug that in like so. And again, save and close this. So now this is the sound cues done. And now what we want to do is create a physics asset or physics material for these. And what this does is this is gonna create the different physics for the wood, the concrete and the grass so that the game and the player knows what it's walking on so it knows what sound effect to play. And so to do that, we're gonna to go to edit, go down to project settings here, and then we're gonna find the physics tab down here. So there it is under engine. If we scroll down, we should find physical surface here. And so this is obviously where we put in the physical surfaces we have in our game. So surface one, we're just gonna simply click on and change this name to grass or whatever you want to call it. Change this one to wood and this one to concrete. Obviously you put these according to what you want them to be. Make sure that the spelling and capitalization is memorized as that needs to be the exact same name we do later on. So again, change this to grass, wood, and concrete, whatever you have. And as you can see, we have 62 different surfaces we can add here. So that's how many different physical surfaces you can have in your game. And so obviously as many different sound effects you can have on walking over different surfaces. So that's all good. So what we're gonna do is just close that. Now we're actually gonna make those physical materials. 
So what we've done is made it so there's the physical surface. Now we'll make the material to go along with that. So to do that, we're gonna right click, go to physics down here, and then physical material here. I'm just gonna select physical material there. So select, and I'll start with wood. So I'm gonna call this one wood underscore footstep underscore PM for physics material. And then like we did the sound cues, we'll duplicate these twice. So control C, control V, control V. And then I'll rename these ones accordingly as well. So obviously I'll leave footstep PM there. I'll just change it from wood to grass. And then the same with this final one here, it will be concrete underscore footstep underscore PM. And again, make sure that these are good according to you. So I've got the concrete, grass and wood there. And again, we'll just open these up straight away. So control to select them all and hit enter to open. Although that's open them all at the same time. So actually we won't, we'll open them individually like this. Surface type, we'll set this one to concrete. So this is where you're then setting it. So obviously we just went and created the surface in the settings, this is now where it's gonna be. So we've got the concrete open, we set the surface type to concrete down here under physical properties, meaning that this physics material will be determined and activated for concrete. So we save, close that, open up the grass one, that is then grass there, save, close, and wood. So it's a very repetitive thing. You know what you're doing, you just change it personalized for each one. So again, wood, save, and close that. Now what we're going to do is actually set this physics material onto the material that we wanted to play on. So obviously here I have the grass, the concrete and the wood materials that I want to be using in my game. So you'd find the materials you want to use and open them up. So I've used the start content ones, so I'm just going to find those here. We have ground grass. If I open up that material there, what we're going to do is simply just have it selected like this. And then under physics material here, we're going to simply select the one we want. So this is for the grass material. So I'll put grass footstep PM like that. If I hit apply, this should now work. So this material here for grass now also has the physics material of grass as well, meaning that this will play the correct footstep. We'll apply, save that, close it, and do that for all of the other materials that we want. So again, do this for all of the ones that you have. I'm then also just gonna do this for concrete as well. Concrete tiles, open that up. Physics material is concrete footstep PM. I'll apply and save this and I'll do it again for wood as well. So we go, it's applied, save that, close it. And finally, I'll get the wood, wood floor, walnut polished, physics material, wood footstep PM, and I'll apply and save this. So there we go, once that's done, we can close these again, like so. I'm just gonna go back to this folder just to keep more organized. And actually what we're gonna do is open up our animation. So we don't wanna go to this folder, we're gonna go back to content, and find our animations. So you're gonna be opening up the animations that you're using. So as I'm using the starter mannequin, I'm gonna to go to mannequin, animations, and here I have them. So the examples I'm gonna be showing you are the run animation and the jumping animation, as those are the ones the character is using by default for me. Obviously, you'll put this on all of your animations that you want it to apply to. It's the exact same process, which I will show you. Just make sure that you do these only on the animations you want. So I've got third person run and third person jump. Open those up like so. If I go to run there, we can see that this is the animation we have. If I just hit pause there, what we're gonna do is find the frame where the foot is on the ground, so where you'd want to play a footstep sound effect. So I've nearly got it there just by randomly pausing it. So if you go to the start, move this along, and that is where the foot is on the floor. So I think around six to eight, six, seven or eight, I think seven is where it's directly on the floor there. So when you find that frame, what you want to do is go to this notifies track up here. I'm gonna right click on it. So notifies one, right click, add notify, and then go to new notify there. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this footstep notify, like so. And then actually that didn't go where I thought, so move it all the way over to the correct frame, like so. And what this does is essentially, it means when the animation is at this frame, it will play this notify, meaning whatever you have set off of this, it will do. So then there's probably, I think there's another footstep in this animation as well. Yep, over here, it's at 15. So if we just get another notify, so again, what we'll do is right click on this track where I want it to be, add notify. Now we can get skeleton notifies and get the footstep notify which we created earlier. So now we have those in there like so, meaning that when this plays, footstep goes down there, notifies, footstep goes down there and it notifies. So we've got that for the run animation. We can simply save and close that. And now we'll do it for the jump animation as well. Obviously, again, do this for all of the ones that you want it on. So for me, I just want it when he lands, which is 
around here I'd say frame 2 like that so again right click add notify skeleton notifies footstep notify like so and I believe that's the only one here yes it is so now save and close that as well again do that for all of the ones that you want it on and so now what we're going to do is go to the animation blueprint so again I'm using the third person mannequin so for me that's third person and in BP so just make sure that you open that up and then go straight over to the event graph here and what we're doing here is actually getting that event we just made which was the notify so like I say when the frame of the animation goes over that it will send a notify so basically a notification to the animation blueprint which is an event which we're going to call now so it can fire off that line of code so what this is we'll find some space down here we're going to right click and we're going to get add anim notify event there so open that one up event anim notify footsteps notify so that is basically the name of the notify that you made which is this one for me so we just get that in there like so so like i said when the animation is playing when it reaches this notify it will fire off this event meaning it will fire off the code we're about to create here so what we're going to do is come out of this and get a line trace by channel so a line trace by channel there and what this is going to be doing is seeing which floor or which surface sorry the player is standing on so we're going to put a line trace from the player here going straight down to the floor to see what surface it is on so grass wood concrete etc anything along those lines and then it will play the according or the correct sorry uh, sound effect for that so what we're going to do to figure this out is we'll move this over a bit actually we'll right click down here and we'll get player character so obviously getting the character we're playing as out the return value we'll get actor location so obviously we want to be able to get the location the player is in to see which surface he's on and so this will be the start as we were seeing where the player is that's where the line trace will start so it starts from the player and for the end so where we want the line trace to end is the floor and now for the default mannequin we're going to be minusing 150 to be able to get to the floor as that's the distance from the character to the floor obviously though if you have a different character or sorry a drastically different character so we change the mesh quite a lot this might be different for you but obviously it depends on how big your mesh is and how big your character is all of that but if you've changed it and it's still very similar to this default mannequin here which it most likely is this value should still be fine but if it doesn't work just mess about with that so what we're going to do is come up with the return value of the get actor location i'm going to get a vector minus a vector like so plug this into the end as again this is where the line trace will end and we're going to minus 150 on the z so just put 150 in the z like so so again this is find out which surface we are on so after that we're going to come out of the line trace by channel here so actually we'll come out of out hit we'll break hit result expand that down there like that so we get more options as we want to use the location as obviously it's the location the player is in and then also out of how out hit as well we are also going to get the surface type as obviously we want to be finding out the surface type we are on so then out of the c line the execution node of the line trace what we're going to do is get a branch like so call that out there and then off the get surface type, what we're going to do is drag out of this and switch on e physical surface like so. And what this is doing is obviously, as you can see, it's getting the different surfaces that we have. So we've got the grass, the wood, and the concrete surface. Now the default will be what you're not going on. So you can put a normal sound effect on there if you want. But for this example, I'm just going to be showing you the different ones we've created. And so this is going to be going into the true off the branch there. So you go off of true into there. And sorry, the condition for this branch wants to be the return value off of the line trace here then obviously once we have figured out which surface we are on which is what this is doing we want to play the correct sound effect so if we're on grass first we'll do that example as the top we're going to drag out of that and play sound at location like so the sound asset will also be the one we want which will be grass footstep Q make sure it's the Q as that has the different ones in that we created the location is just going to be the location out of this break hit result here again to so get location plug that in there like so and then it's just the exact same for the wood and concrete but obviously you change the sound so we can duplicate this another two times and plug these in accordingly so obviously plug the second one into wood change the asset to wood footstep q plug this one into concrete change it to concrete footstep q like that and the location will be the same the location out of the break hit result like so so now this should be all done i'll run you through this again what's doing is when the animation goes over the notify that we've created it's going to be getting the player location to start the line trace and then it will be minusing 150 meaning it will be going down to the floor to end the line trace and then once it's done that what it's going to use that line trace for is to get the surface type and if it does hit the floor sorry it will get the surface type 
and then play the according sound effect which it needs depending on where you are walking. So if we compile and save this, if we minimize, if we hit play to test it, see we're walking around, we don't hear anything. If we walk on the wood, we get the wood walking sound effect. If we walk on the concrete, it changes to the concrete walking sound effect. And if we walk on the grass, it changes to the grass walking sound effect. So this works perfectly. We've got grass here, concrete here, and wood here. So that works out perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we wanted to do. We've set it up so that we have our different sound effects here for the different floor types that we have. We've set it up in the animations so that it gives us a notify when we have a footstep play. And we've also set it up so we've got the line trace to play the correct sound effect. And it sounds something like this. So I think that'll be it for this video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.